In this video, I'm going to talk about Popes or proof of attendance protocol. I'm going to show you how to create one, how you send the links out for users to claim their Popes. And then I'm also going to compare this to how you'd kind of go about creating a traditional NFT and what the benefits of each system are. At the end of the video, I'm going to discuss why I wouldn't use Popes for anything that kind of contains a real value. My name is James Ricciuni and on this channel I create content about blockchain development and decentralized finance. If you're interested in learning more then subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. So a Pope is a centralized service, it runs at pope.xyz, that's a website address. We can go to create our own Pope, create a drop. We can give a Pope a name here, I'm going to do this for my uh, Ethereum hacking game at ethereumhacker.com. Um, I'm going to create a simple Pope that we can use to kind of give out to users that have played the game. We're going to give it a name and description and then we just need to set a date. So we need to kind of create a mint date which is going to be from today and we're going to run this for a year. So we're going to go to 2023. We're going to put in the website address and then we need some artwork. So the artwork should be a square format, it should have a round structure generally. Um, this is the example that I've done for the Ethereum Hacker game. And you can see it's kind of, it's going to be 500 by 500 pixels and it's going to be ping or GIF format. So you, you can't use a JPEG for a Pope. Finally, I'm going to put in an email and how many Popes we want to mint. So I put in a thousand here. To start with, they only send you a list of 50 links for you to, uh, in text file format for you to download. So then because this is a centralized service, we actually need to get it kind of reviewed. Obviously it's not very web free, but we have to kind of create a reason for why we're creating this Pope, who's it for, what the, the participation of attendance was actually to do with. And that will get kind of sent viewed through to some kind of gatekeeper who will either authorize it or deny it. Once you, do, once you fill that in, send the info across and then wait up to 24 hours for the drop to go live. You can see here we've got the name of the Pope and we can go into that and it will give us some of that information. This is obviously public, we can see other people's as well, so bear that in mind when you're creating it. Once you've done that, you'll get an email come through saying you've requested your links and you're going to receive confirmation in 24 hours. I had my links come through after just a couple of hours, uh, but the only thing was, yeah, they only sent 50 links as opposed to the thousand that I requested. It's something to bear in mind if you're going to be using this for an event with a lot of people. Now some of the benefits of Popes are that they can be sent out without paying a transaction fee. So a user will get the link, they can then just paste their um, Ethereum address or their wallet address into that link and then they're going to get sent the NFT. And Popes are built actually on ARC721 NFT technology. The only issue with this is that it's not actually sent on Ethereum, it's sent on a Gnosis chain. So the transactions are really cheap for the kind of back-end service that is sending these out. Um, which means that they, they're not really going to ever hold any value or in, in my opinion that it's, it's unlikely that if you get sent a Pope for attending an event, it's more to kind of build up an on-chain history of your kind of your wallet address rather than something that's going to be worth a lot of money in the future. I can't see that kind of if you went to a Ethereum conference or something that that kind of Pope is going to be valuable at a, a date at a later stage because not only is it on the Gnosis change which doesn't have any utility anyway, so it's kind of Ethereum mainnet protocols aren't going to be able to kind of see that token, at least not with the kind of infrastructure that's in place at the moment. An alternative to creating a Pope would be actually to create a real NFT. And we can use something like OpenSea here. If you go to OpenSea's website, you can go to create, you can upload your image. This very similar kind of setup process, it doesn't take any longer. The only downside is that your users will actually have to pay a minting fee to kind of create these NFTs. Because you can mint it either on like a, a low cost chain like Polygon or a kind of more uh, premium chain like Ethereum mainnet, they potentially could hold value in the, at a later stage. That's not to say they will, but um, like anything, if you're, if you're doing something on Ethereum mainnet, there's potentially more perceived value there. So much the same way we filled out last form, we're going to put in a name and a description. We're, we can set a collection address. We want to have multiple kind of, uh, kind of different NFTs within a certain collection. If you want to have different people have different uh, styles, different images for their NFT. I can, I've used in the past, I actually created a NFT uh, image creator or image layerer, which uses different layers of kind of eyes and ears and mouth to create kind of the 10,000 PFPs, which are so commonly used for NFT drops. 
So as you can see, we create this NFT and we can actually make that available at zero cost. So all anyone has to do is pay the transaction fee to, for someone to take ownership of that. The final option is to create your own NFT from scratch. And this is what I'd suggest for anyone who has kind of any coding experience at all. This is something that kind of is very daunting if it's the first time you've done it, but once you've done it, if like, once you understand how it works, and you've got a kind of template to use like we've got here, then it can be really simple. And if you have the option or you have the ability to deploy code to um, the Ethereum mainnet, this gives you a lot more functionality and you can customize things and you can create your own NFT how you want it exactly. And it's, that's a permissionless contract. So there's no gatekeeper that can tell you what to do or what you can't do. By creating your own NFT like this, it's something that could potentially hold value in the future because it's deployed to Ethereum. And it's a much more interesting way of using the technology. So here we have a very simple contract. We're using an open Zeppelin ERC721 library and a base64, which is um, an encoding library also from open Zeppelin. We're given the contract a name. Again, I'm using the Ethereum hack NFT to create this NFT. Uh, I'm passing in a name and a token ticker symbol. We're then gonna provide a token URI. Now this is a kind of JSON metadata which kind of provides information about the NFT. So it provides someone like OpenSea where they can see the image, the name, and the description for this NFT contract. And this is where we're using the Base64 library because we can encode this as Base64 and we're providing a name, a description, and an image for the NFT itself. This is actually the token ID. So if we've got a thousand tokens, we could potentially add some custom logic in here to display a different image for every token address, and that's absolutely fine as well. We then have a mint function here so that every user can mint their own token up to a thousand. So the first 1,000 users that complete the game can go ahead and mint their own token. I'm gonna deploy this on the Gorelli testnet. So let's do that now. So we're gonna require that the, the user doesn't have one already as well. So if someone's already got one, they can't have one to their address. Not the best way to avoid a civil attack, but for something as simple as this, and it's something that's kind of deployed on a test net, it's not gonna hold any real value, I think it's fine. We're gonna compile that contract with no warnings, and then we're gonna use injected MetaMask, and then I'm gonna go ahead and deploy my contract. I'm gonna to have to sign a transaction, this is where you pay the gas fee, and also every person that mints a, a uh, NFT, they're gonna to have to pay a gas fee as well. We can then expand our contract and we can see we've got a bunch of functions here. We can let's try and go ahead and mint ourselves a token first. We can own the first token. And there we go. So I can use this contract address and owner of token zero will come up as my address. The final thing I'm gonna do is I want it to verify this contract in uh, etherscan. So I'm gonna put the contract address in and set the contract here. There are no constructor arguments, um, so we can just go ahead and verify that. Then if we go to gorelli.etherscan, we can paste in that contract address. And you can see the contract's been verified here. And if we go to transactions, we can see the first token has been minted. This mint function or this mint button here, you can actually incorporate that into your own website using a library such as web3.js or, web, or ethers.js. So should you use a Pope or an NFT? Well, I think that depends on what you're doing. If you have an event and you just want something really simple that you can kind of give out links to users and they can get a kind of a, a digital fridge magnet that they can use to kind of show that they've been at that event, then great. P people seem to love them. Um, I've been to conferences where people go absolutely nuts and they're kind of asking for popes. Um, also for hackathons and things like that, it could be a really useful tool. If you want to do something that's actually kind of kind of adding more value or you want to get involved in the code, then I'd say that it's much better to go with an NFT because the NFT has a more kind of a permissionless system. What we're trying to do here is create permissionless systems in blockchain technology. And that's not really what a Pope is. A Pope is a centralized service. So by creating our own smart contract on a decentralized network, we can create this permissionless system where anyone can go and mint an NFT and they can have actual ownership of that NFT. No one can stop them. No one, 
can kind of has authorization, even the developer can't do anything to kind of prevent them owning that NFT and transferring it and selling it and doing whatever they want with it. Hope you found this information useful. If you're interested in learning more about blockchain technology and decentralized finance, then subscribe to the channel, hit the like button for YouTube algorithm, and thank you for watching.